So refreshable clones. You create the clone through a database link. So let's actually, let's do it and see if we can build up fairly close to a real world example. Now, I have created here two container databases. I've got one called CDB1 and one called CDB2. Now, So I've got my two container databases. You create the clone through a database link. So let's begin, just by way of a bit of revision, let's begin by creating a pluggable database. So at the moment, show PDBs. PDBs in this database, all I've got is my seed container, and the CDB2 also. All I have is my seed container. So I'll begin by creating a pluggable database, just with the most basic syntax possible in CDB1. Create pluggable database, PDB1, admin user, PDB admin, identified by Oracle. And that should create, I would hope, in less than a minute. It's created, it's in mount mode, so I shall open my PDB. And there I am, standard PDB. Now, to create the refreshable clone here in PDB2, the first step, create a database link. Now, the database link has to connect to a user in the source database who has been explicitly granted this particular privilege. Oops, explicitly been granted. I'll create the database link first in the destination database. Create database link to CDB1, connect to system, identify by Oracle using my TNS connect string. Now in the destination, in the source database, that user will have to have been explicitly granted this privilege grant create pluggable database to system container equals all. It's not good enough to have it through a role. You can waste a lot of time before you realize that. I'll give him the grant in this one as well, in case I ever want to do a reverse of the operation. So I've got my database link with an appropriate setup. I now need to create it. Right, this is going to be pretty quick. Create pluggable database, clone PDB1. From PDB1 at my database link, and I'm specifying a refresh mode. That's all there is to the automatic refreshable database. Just specify a refresh mode. The refresh mode can be quite frequent. Here I'm making it every one minute. So assuming there's no problem with the refresh mechanism, my clone database will never be more than one minute. The source over here in CDB in CDB1. So CDB1, this is open open throughout the whole operation, we're cloning it through. This is the only bad downside. If your database is many terabytes, this is going to create quite a long, this is going to take quite a long time to create that. Does that matter? Well, not really. It will keep refreshing. So it might take a significant length of time to do this. You know, that has to be borne in mind. John. Having done that, we now just a second. There we go. It's created in mount mode. Yes. The uh, refresh timing. Mm -hmm. um, what What is the options there? Can I say every one second and every 60 minutes? Anything uh, is, is available there? I haven't tried less than one minute. I've no reason to assume it won't work. I haven't tried it. Um, whether you do it for one minute that frequently in the real world is open to debate. You know, you're going to be continually launching refresh processes. I would have thought every five or 10 minutes would make more sense. Or of course, it can be manual. Perfect. Just let Thank the thing you. stay static until you explicitly state, I want it refreshed now. Speaking of the refreshes, 
I'm going to kick off a tail of the alert log. And that should be quite helpful to see what's going on. So I'll launch the wind tail command. There we go. And we'll see a tail of the alert log. And we should see here the refreshes coming through. Notice, see, it's done through the media recovery mechanism. And we have the last multiplicable data is fresh. The last one taught in my time zone was launched at 1809. 1809 was the last. So we should have another one coming through pretty soon. So this is just the alert log of CDB2. Now, at any stage, you can open it read only as an in, no, you can open it read only at any stage. So I think I just saw a refresh come through. Yes, I did. The refresh just, just completing now, 1810. So every minute, I'm just going to refresh come through. I'll start off here on CDB1. What I'm going to do here is go to my pluggable container, PDB1, and I'll create a user called Scott, identified by Tiger. I'll give him some ridiculous privileges, like DBA. And then I shall create a table in his schema. Create table scott.t1, c1 timestamp. And I'll insert in to that table this timestamp. Right. The next time a refresh comes through, the next time a refresh occurs, that's going to come across to my clone PDB1. And I think a refresh has just happened right now. John, while we're a second, a couple of questions in the queue. Please. Uh, what what would be the things to take into consideration if the refresh interval is, for example, 24 hours? Um, you'd need to make sure all your archive logs are available on the source, you know, that all the read you needed was there. Um, apart from that, I guess there's nothing much. And that might well be a reasonable usage case for this, because what you would do if you were refreshing every 24 hours is you get your refresh come through, perhaps overnight, and then in the morning, you will do this. Alter pluggable database, clone PDB1, open read only. Open it read only. There you see in the alert log, open read only. Now you can do that as any sign. And I can describe what I'll have to change to the appropriate container. So if I go to my pluggable container, clone PDB1, what we'll see here, if I select star from scott.t1, the table is there, but no rows. Question for you all. The table came across. Why hasn't the row come across? Just possibly. Commit. We even have transactional integrity at that level. If I now make this, put it down to mount mode again, with also pluggable database, clone PDB1, close immediate. So the idea would be that you'd open this in the morning and then all day you'll be able to run your queries against the thing, seeing the data as it was at the time you opened it. Then come the evening, shut it down and wait for the refresh to come through. The last one being 1813, 43. The next refresh could, should come through imminently. And the next refresh will, of course, include that commit. And we should then be able to see my data. The fact they've even managed to get the transactional integrity functioning at this level, I find quite incredible. So what we end up with is very similar to a real-time query database, depending on how frequently the refreshes you permit the refreshes to happen. While it is in the mount mode, which is effectively the mode we're in now, in mount mode, of course it can be refreshed, but it can't be queried. Now, John, another question in the queue. Mm -hmm. And by the way, uh, great work, Praveen, for coming in with the commit answer. Uh, 
John, how many refreshable PDBs can we have? Is it just one or as many as licensed for? As many as licensed for, and you can even fan them out in a cascading fashion. So I've no intention of demonstrating that today. But I see a refresh has come through. So let's just, just check that it really has worked. If I now open the database, that's a pluggable database. Open read only. I should now be able to move to it. And this time, there's my row. So you, you get the effect of what's going on. So open it, read, write to new stage. 